I spoke with the president and co-founder of the Migration Policy Institute, Dmitry Papadimitriou, today, and I asked him what he thought of the U.S. and how it was doing so poorly, or why, on immigration. We have a system where we do not try to modulate the numbers of visas that we issue, work visas in particular, that we issue every year. As a result, labor markets sometimes need more people than their visas, which creates an incentive both for employers and for would-be immigrants to break the law, come in the United States, work in these jobs. Then it creates circumstances under which some employers may decide not to treat immigrants properly, which then in turn hurts American workers who work right next to these immigrants. Because it creates, it creates animosity? No, no, it's not animosity. Basically, it has a depressing effect on wages in this particular firm. I, I know Congress is looking at this as well, and there's been, there's been some changes. And you laugh because I, I, I'm guessing you don't think they've done enough or they don't appreciate the, the seriousness of the situation. Am I right? I think that they do, but the politics does not allow them to actually be as serious in terms of acting as they are in terms of appreciating that this thing needs to be fixed. I'm impressed by the fact that members on both sides, you know, Republicans and Democrats, as well as in the Senate and in the House of Representatives, get this. You know, you don't need to go into 10 minutes in order to try to explain it yeah. to them. But they don't want to give each other a win. And there are so many different pieces that need to move roughly, you know, at the same time. That what, what do you tell people when they say, look, if I let people into this country, or any country for that matter, they're going to take away whether it's unskilled labor or skilled labor jobs. Either way, you get protests from the establishment, right? What do you tell those individuals when they say, why would we let people into a country if the sole purpose is for them to come in and work, which essentially takes away one job from either an American or whichever country you're, you're from? An employer can have 14 applicants, but the one that fits by far the best and can make the immediate difference for the employer might be number 15. And number 15 may have to come from the outside. That's one thing. The other fact oh, Is that a nice way of saying they're better qualified? They are probably better qualified, yes. Now, aren't you saying that? I am saying better qualified, but have the specific, you know, skills that are required by an employer. Employers in the United States and increasing parts of the world have been taught, they've learned, that they can actually work, you know, sort of deal with their labor market the same way that they deal with, let's say, other parts of the production yeah. process. Just in time. I want somebody who has at least five years' experience in this, you know, very technical area, and I want him to come to my place and hit the ground running. And I apologize, you had the second point on this as well. Yeah. The second point is that there is somehow a limited number of jobs. That's also a fallacy. Jobs, but people, constantly feel, but expand. people feel that way. If I take away the, the cameraman's job, for example, I mean, there's not unlimited cameraman jobs You're here. You're absolutely right. At the individual level, there is displacement. But when you think in terms of what other jobs may open up, if you hire more cameramen, if you build more production facilities, if you're competitive in terms of bring, bring movies and shows to your area, then more jobs are created, including more jobs for camera. I mean, you're saying that if you make the industry bigger and better, exactly. that would widen the pie. Exactly. Let, me, let me get away from the U.S. for just a moment and talk about what's happening in Europe, because there's also a great <laughs> debate that's happening there as well. You know this very well. The U.K., Germany, they don't agree on very much. But one thing a lot of these, especially northern countries, do agree on is to limit immigration. And there's a very, very fiery debate that's happening there. Your take? It is a difficult debate for them. The British debate is in large part because of a horrible political mistake that their prime minister made. Before he got elected, he claimed that he was going to bring total immigration down by 100,000 spots. And that's what happens when politicians run for office or when their staff doesn't exactly do you're you saying know, it's all a the right You're research. saying it's a mistake. It was a mistake because he couldn't possibly do that because there is no way to restrict immigration 
coming from inside the EU. And the vast majority of immigration that goes to the UK is from within the EU. So some staffer should have said to then candidate Cameron, you can't say that. We cannot do it. Because you can't enforce it anyway. You cannot enforce it. Whether you it. agree with it or not. You, are, you will be in violation of European yeah. law. 